Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, our Truth Skin Health products, formulations or ingredients, something you may have heard about, read about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off our websites. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having your own business, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, all from the comfort of your own living room, working out of your home, working as much or as little as you like, and helping change the world via the power of nutritional supplementation, the power of the longevity nutritional supplements. Please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470 for more information. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We have been talking about the relationship between bodybuilding and circadian rhythms. I'm saying bodybuilding somewhat facetiously, but health is really about bodybuilding. You don't have to be a official bodybuilder working out at the gym two hours a day, five days a week, or six days a week. We're all bodybuilders. If, if we want to be healthy, we all want to be bodybuilders, building our body, literally. Anabolism, that's what it's called. <clears throat> metabolism, that famous word we hear all the time, metabolism. Oh, he has a low metabolism. He has a high metabolism. Metabolism is the sum total of anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism means building. Catabolism means breaking down. And the word metabolism is like your bottom line. Your metabolism is the sum total of your buildup plus your breakdown. It's like your body is a business. And when, you're, when you have a business, you can have, you can, your bottom line is based on the combination of how much you're spending and how much you're making. How much you're spending can be thought of as catabolism in your business. How much you're making can be thought of as anabolism in your business. And the bottom line can be thought of as metabolism. Your body business has a bottom line like any business will have a bottom line. And that bottom line is called metabolism, which is the sum total of building and breakdown. Circadian rhythms, rhythms from the sun, are one of the major control factors for breakdown and build up. When, you're, uh, when we get enough sun and we get enough rest and the rhythms are right, we have uh, we go into a net anabolic mode. We we're net building, building, bodybuilding requires enough just enough light and just enough rest. 
And all of this is going to show up as biochemistry. It's going to show up as cholesterol. It's going to show up as insulin. It's going to show up as blood sugar. It's going to show up as thyroid, as a thyroid hormone. All of these are related to the rhythms of day and night. Why is this important? Well, take the case of sugar. Because sugar is important for building. You're going to have a major connection between light and dark and circadian rhythms and, and, and artificial light and how we handle sugar. Dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, cannot help but result if we throw off these day-night cycles. And this is our, our most important health challenge that we deal with, that we confront, is dysglycemia along with digestive health, digestive health issues. Insulin, cholesterol, all of this is <clears throat> the result of, <clears throat> excuse me, all of this is affected by sunlight and circadian rhythms and, and pineal gland activity. And this is why I say, in my opinion, 24-hour lighting and the subsequent disruption in circadian rhythms that's caused by this all-day, all-night light is a hidden cause of metabolic syndrome, which is insulin secretion problems or insulin disease, and all the symptoms that come with metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, obesity, cancer, autoimmunity, pretty much every single health challenge is going to be related to mess up, messed up insulin, messed up blood sugar, which in turn is going to be related to disruptions in the circadian rhythm by daytime, by a 24-hour daytime uh, lighting. And that includes elevated cholesterol. And you can take all the statin drugs you want. You're not going to improve your health one little bit. Do you understand this? If you're taking a statin drug, please... You are not improving your health one iota. In fact, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're messing it up via nutritional deficiency and toxicity. All you're doing at best is reducing your risk of a heart attack. All right? That's the whole premise of taking a statin drug. Never mind that you're poisoning your whole your body, poisoning the cholesterol system, uh, manufacturing system, requiring nutritional, uh, nutritional resources, leading to deficiencies. It's like the whole thing with fluoride. Oh, yeah, you'll have nice teeth, but you're going to be dealing with fluoride toxos, uh, fluorosis, fluoride toxicity of the pineal gland, of the bones, of the teeth, of every single soft tissue in the body, but you'll have nice teeth. Oh, you, we know you'll have, you're not going to make coenzyme Q10 if you take your statin drug. We know that. We know that you're going to have uh, uh, deficiencies in copper and magnesium and, and uh, other minerals and zinc that are responsible for helping detoxify the statin drugs, but you'll have a 1% chance, chance less of uh, getting a heart attack. You'll lower your cholesterol for sure. That's true. With a statin drug, you're going to lower your cholesterol. But who thinks this is a good idea? Who, who thinks lowering your body's ability or, or suppressing your body's ability to, uh, to make this incredibly vital building element is a good thing? Oh, yeah, the drug companies do, and your doctor. That's it. From a biochemical standpoint, it makes absolute, absolutely no sense. Cholesterol is not a problematic substance. It's a building substance. It's a growth and repair substance. It's important for movement, for movement, for muscle action, for thinking, for neural activity, for brain activity. It's a chassis upon which the body adds little pieces. Remember, this is how chemistry works. It's like tinker toys. Think of a, think of a tinker toy structure. That's cholesterol. And then the body will stick little pieces onto that, that chassis that cholesterol structure to create cortisol, stress hormone, to create testosterone, building hormone, to create estrogen, fertility hormone, and youth hormone, to create uh, DHEA, immune, immune building hormone, to create vitamin D, all around and critically vital for every single cell in the body hormone, all from the chassis of cholesterol. Oh yeah, let's, let's shut the body down. Let's shut the body's ability to make cholesterol. That makes sense, doctor. Cholesterol is highly electrical. It's piezoelectrical. I love this. You press it, or when it's deformed, it actually generates an electrical charge. That's called piezoelectricity, P-I-E-Z-O, piezoelectricity. That's why it's found in membranes. All membranes will contain cholesterol because the membrane, particularly the membrane of a cell, the covering of a cell, is how electricity flows into and out of the cell. So it makes perfect sense that electrically active substances would be located in the membrane. Well, guess what? Cholesterol is an exquisitely electrically active substance, and as it changes shape, it generates an electrical charge. It may very well be an information storage device for the cell. It may well be a computer chip, or at least a part of the computer chip-like nature of a cell membrane. Oh, let's shut down the production of cholesterol. That makes sense. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we 
are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about uh, anything we're speaking about here today, melatonin, serotonin, circadian rhythms, depression. Actually, we haven't really talked about serotonin yet, but we will be. If you're on a statin drug, you want to wean yourself off of it, use your ultimate niacin. Do you know niacin is as effective as statin drugs for lowering cholesterol? Why would that be? Why would niacin be like a statin drug, like nature's statin drug? Well, because niacin helps your body process sugar. Niacin uh, is an anti-diabetic uh, vitamin. By the way, melatonin also is anti-cholesterol. Melatonin is also like a nature's, is also like nature's statin drug. Although melatonin is a hormone and you want to be a little bit careful. You don't have to worry about that with niacin. There's all these wonderful opportunity, uh, wonderful options that we have if we don't want to participate in the medical model. We participate in the medical model via indoctrination. We are indoctrinated. A doctrine is a belief system. We're given belief systems. Indoctrination means to have belief systems injected into us, literally, or not literally, but psychologically injected into us. Mind viruses that say, I need a statin drug. I, I bet 99% of people on a statin drug don't know exactly what's happening, except it's supposed to lower your cholesterol and keep you healthy. That's basically what we know. But we don't, nobody tells us about coenzyme Q10 deficiency with uh, statin drugs. Nobody tells us about muscle diseases with statin drugs. Nobody tells us that cholesterol is our best friend, our best biochemical friend. If you guys, I know I've said it a bunch, uh, I've repeated it a bunch, but if you guys have gotten that message here in the last couple of weeks, or even really since I've started this program, that cholesterol is our best biochemical friend, you're like 1% of the population, half percent of the population that knows that cholesterol is your best biochemical best friend. Most people just say, ah, oh, cholesterol, bad guy. I'm taking a statin drug. Get rid of the bad guy. Good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. The simplification, this infantilization where they treat us like we're infants, like we're, like we're dumb. Cholesterol's bad. Cholesterol, that's your bad cholesterol. That's your good cholesterol. Statin drugs make your good cholesterol go up, make your bad cholesterol go down. All right, 844 is our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Treatment products, please go to truthtreatments.com. Check out our Truth Retinol 5% gel. If you are interested in anti-aging skin care, you, you should go no further than vitamin A and vitamin C. Retinol and fat-soluble vitamin C. And you'll find those in all our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. So cholesterol is piezoelectrical. It's found in the membranes of a cell. And as the cell does its business and the membrane gets distorted, electrical charges are generated. It's an information storage. It, it's involved in the membrane's information storage properties. A membrane is like a little coating on top of a cell. It's where the action is in the cell. It's the brain of a cell suppressing cholesterol production gives you a dumb cell brain. In essence, it disrupts cell membranes. This is why muscles, this is why muscles and nerves are particularly sensitive to, to statin drug toxicity because the membrane is extremely important. It's important for all cells, but it's extra, extra important for muscle cells and nerve cells because they're so highly electrical. So these highly electrical systems are especially susceptible to statin drug toxicity, that's muscles and nerves. These highly electrical systems are where cholesterol lives because cholesterol is highly electrical. We produce more cholesterol when we're growing, when we're under stress, when we're recovering from surgery, when we're bodybuilding. And remember, we all wanna be bodybuilders. Cholesterol's got a lot of similarities to serotonin. Serotonin, like cholesterol, are help the body handle life. Cholesterol is a life management substance. Serotonin is a life management hormone and a life management brain chemical. Serotonin is both a hormone and a brain chemical. Neurotransmitter, they say. Most serotonin is actually found in your blood and your digestive system. Serotonin comes from the word sero, which means blood, and tonin, which means tonicity. Serotonin makes your blood tighter. It keeps your blood from flowing as readily. Serotonin, that's where the word serotonin comes from. Comes from. It's a blood clotter. Why would it be a blood clotter? Well, because it's a, it's a daytime hormone. You get hurt in the daytime, you bleed. So serotonin 
is helps us handle the the not only the psychological ups and downs of day to day life, but the cuts and the bumps and bruises of day daytime life, especially on the African savanna, especially millions of years ago. By the way, serotonin is one of the most ancient of all the hormones. Estrogen, serotonin, the endocannabinoids, which is very interesting, the same chemicals that are in marijuana. These are ancient hormones that are found that have been found in cells for billions of years. You could probably throw thyroid hormone in there as well. And that's why you monkeying around with the serotonin system with Prozac and Effexor and Zoloft, this is why it can be so problematic. Just like statin drugs, monkeying around the cholesterol system can be problematic. Cholesterol being a life management system. Cholesterol also being tied into circadian rhythms. Same thing with serotonin. A lot of similarities between cholesterol and serotonin. And just like monkeying around, messing around with the... Uh, with the cholesterol system, the cholesterol processing system is playing with fire. Likewise, the serotonin system. Serotonin is the quintessential sunlight hormone. Cholesterol is the quintessential sunlight substance. Serot serotonin is the quintessential daytime, night, uh, uh, daylight biochemical hormone in the body. And because of electrical lighting, which gives us, for the first time in our evolutionary history, remember serotonin's been around for billions of years, we've had electrical lighting for 120 years. Not even 0.0001% of, of the time that cellular cells have been alive, and serotonin has been active. So it's, it's, it is not possible that disruptions in the 24-hour light cycle and the circadian rhythm will not have an effect on our health. It is not pot. It has to. It absolutely has to. Our 24-hour light, not to mention uh, our computer screens and our television screens, all the light that we are subjected to, that we are subjecting ourselves to, is going to have an effect. I'm not sitting here saying that we should go back to the Stone Ages. I'm not saying we should have no light. I'm just saying we have to respect all the different ways our environment impacts us for better or worse. And these also represent options for us. Options for getting strong, options for bodybuilding, options, options for healing. We can leverage light. In effect, there's no real difference between light and biochemistry. If we had the right detection mechanisms, if we had the right glasses or the right lenses, the right types of de detectors, we could see chemical reactions as light. Light is biochemistry. Biochemistry is light. Light cannot help but impact our biology and that means 24-hour lighting, and particularly fluorescent lighting, has to have an effect. You know, fluorescent lighting emits blue light. Sunlight emits red light. The blue light acts as a depressant. Red light is stimulating. Sunlight is stimulating. It's red light. Fluorescent light is blue light. That's why they call it the blues. Blue is, uh, acts as a, blue light acts like a depressant. I'm not sure if that's why they call it the blues, but, but blue has a kind of calming and a depressant effect. There's a, a, a biochemistry distorting effect to the different types of light that we subject ourselves to. And that kind of is good news because it means that by using certain kinds of light, we can actually improve our health, which I will talk about uh, when we come back from our break. Got lines open, 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return right after this. We are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you're in the Sacramento area, Northern California area, or Central California, I think it's Central California, I'll be doing some talks on the uh, Friday the 26th, Saturday the 27th, and Sunday the 28th in Sacramento, California. Let's see where we're here. I'll be Friday will be at... Uh, the Holistic Lighthouse Event Center, 401 B Vernon Street, zip 95678. You want to call Jay for uh, RSVP information or to RSVP, 916-712-9504 is his number. Or you can call Cheryl at 916-300-3597. You can call these folks for all our talks, 916-712-9504. Uh, That's Jay. Uh, Jay Ingalls and Cheryl Palazzini, 916-300-3597, Friday, January 26th. I'll be at the Holistic Lighthouse Event Center, 401B Vernon Street, and that's in Roseville. 
then uh, the, uh, that's in the afternoon. That's one to two. Then in the evening, I'll be at Rayleigh's Market Event Room, 6845 Douglas Boulevard, and that's in Granite Bay, California. That's 6 to 7 p.m. The next day, Saturday, I'll be doing a couple talks. One uh, at Cheryl's house, apparently, at 331 Templeton Court in Granite Bay. And that's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then later on in the evening, uh, or in the afternoon, 4 to 6 p.m. at Jay's place at 3547 Souter Lane in Loomis, California. And then lastly, I'll be doing a talk Sunday, 10 to 11, again at the Holistic Lighthouse Event Center, 401B Vernon Street. Just call. I know that's a lot of information, but call uh, call Jay at 916-712-9504 for more information. And Cheryl at 916-300-3597. Love to see you out there. We're going to talk about the simplicity of good health. I don't get to talk about absolutely everything I want to talk about here on this program because you can't just keep, you know, the, the basics are so fundamental and so important. And periodically I'll talk about some of the basic stuff, but things like the importance of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest nervous system versus the fight or flight nervous system is a very fundamental, important subject that we don't always talk about in this program. The primacy of the blood and the cells when it comes to disease and health, all disease being cell disease and all cell disease being preceded by dirty blood, the triangle of disease, how the, how it comes to be that this body that is this remarkable, incredible regenerating system deteriorates so rapidly and with such disastrous results. We are a regenerating system. Our bodies are a regenerating system. Deterioration and degeneration shouldn't happen. How is it that we come to fall apart? These are all things that are important to understand if we're going to reverse the degenerative process and, and restore ourselves back to regeneration or net anabolism or net in the black as we're supposed to be. All right, 844-236-6010. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we will get to you momentarily. A uh, couple things I want to read for you here, and then we'll get your calls. This is from the journal Cancer Epidemiology, Biomarkers and Prevention. Effect, in ret effect of retinol in preventing squamous cell, uh, cell cancer squamous cell skin cancer there's two kinds of skin there's three kinds of skin cancer one is melanoma and that's the hideous kind melanoma by the way can occur inside the body so i don't really necessarily call it i don't even like to think of it as a skin cancer it's very misleading to think of melanoma as a skin cancer because you can get melanoma in your brain you can get melanoma inside your body jimmy carter got melanoma in the brain and he actually he doesn't have it anymore Jimmy Carter is in his 90s i think he's 92 president former president jimmy carter is 90 something years old and he got melanoma last year, maybe the year before, and six months later, he doesn't have melanoma anymore. Now, he did do the, the, moder the, the standard medical procedures for getting rid of it, but nonetheless, he doesn't have it anymore. So melanoma is not necessarily a skin cancer. The two main, main skin cancers, true skin cancers, are called basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. Carcinomas mean that it's basically a cancer of the covering, the epithelia the coverings of the body, and the skin cancers are carcinomas, basal, and squamous. And, and basal cells not, you know, people, a lot of people get basal cell, you pretty much just have that taken off. Squamous cell can be a little tricky, and squamous cell can metastasize, and that's the, that's the one you got to be careful with. Uh, and as it turns out, using topical retinol can help prevent squamous cell carcinoma. And I think this is, I'm sorry, this is, supple, this is from, well, topical retinol can definitely help because topical retinol gets converted into retinoic acid. Our Truth Retinol 5% gel, by the way, is not just for anti-aging, it's anti-cancer. It will help get rid of something called AK, which stands for actinic keratosis, little flaps of skin, little, little uh, kind of raised bumps on the, uh, on the skin called AK, which can be precancerous. And if you go to a doctor, you're going to get toxic, you're going to get a toxic, uh, a toxic topical substance called 5-FU. Well, don't, you don't need toxic 5-FU. Use your Truth Retinol 5% gel, which gets converted into retinoic acid. So our Truth Retinol 5% gel, like all our Truth products, are much more than anti-aging products, much more than beauty products. They're health products. And that's the thing about skin, is, uh, skin, health, uh, skin care, is it should be skin health. I just got an email today about from a, a, a note from a dermatologist who decides she's going to make skincare products. Dermatologists don't know about skin health. They know about skin disease. Just like doctors don't know about health. They know about diseases. Dermatologists don't make skincare products. They're not in the lab making products. They read things in the book and decide what they want, and they call a pharmacist or a chemist to make the products for them. Don't be hoodwinked by the doctors who supposedly make skincare products. They don't. 
and making a skincare product that's effective on the skin has nothing to do with medicine. Like taking care of the body has nothing to do with medicine. All right, let's see here. Get one more. Ah, I think I think I want to go take some phone calls here. We do have lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. Tony. Tony. I think this is my friend Tony in California. Tony. My buddy Tony. It sure is. Hey, yes, Tony. Nice, What's going on? Nice talking to you. Nice What's talking to you. On? Always is. I've decided I, I decided to take advantage of my having gotten about 15 years younger, and I've applied for a building inspector job for the city of Santa Cruz. Are you kidding and, me? Uh, are, are, you, are you serious? Oh, no, I, no, no, I'm, I'm going to have my interview probably next week. Well, let and, me tell uh, the folks, how old are you, Tony? 82. You are I'll the most amazing-looking 82-year-old man I've ever seen in my life. I was talking about how we don't want our body to fall apart and deteriorate. Tony is a living example of what does not have to happen to us as we get older. You really are, Tony. Tony's a strapping six foot three, whatever. I don't know. He looks like a football player. Eighty-two years old. Right. Looks like he uh, looks like I'm, you could play I'm running back. I'm trying to get rid of that look, but I'm I'm falling together. I'm not falling apart. I'm falling together. I love and it. What do you What do you owe it to? What do you owe that amazing vigor and strength and robustness that not only you 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 uh, you exude just from talking to you, but you just by looking at you? What do you owe that to? Well, uh, longevity. I, just, All right. I like that. You probably owe that. And uh, but uh, what I really I really have something serious to talk about. Yeah. About three years ago, you offered to send me a sample of the retinol some for blemish control. You saw, you saw a blemish on my face. I um, did? I, did I? Under, it, well, I'm under my, when I'm under my left eye. I have one of those. All right. Uh, it's, 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 uh, AK. Yeah. Yeah, Actinic. It. Yeah, exactly. Right. My initial, my initial, the Anthony Tespa. I okay. AK in lots of places because I was a roofer since I was seven years old. Okay, so you want me to send you? You want me to send you a little sample? I I, I don't remember promising that, but I I definitely will. Can you just send it to Dave Michaels? Because I'm having having trouble getting my address to you. Um, let me call Dave. Tell tell Dave to call me. Will you tell Dave to call me or text me your address, and I'll get it out to you as soon as I get the address. I'll get it out to you. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you, Tony. I appreciate your call. Thank you. Take care. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're on hold, we'll get to you when we come back from our break, so please don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and you're you listening brainer, to the right A big Berkey water. Okay, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out my skin health products, Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, and our longevity products at pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also uh, check out our news stories and blog posts, which we have up at all our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Also have a search engine up at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. If you miss a program, they're all reviewable. And uh, got all kinds of archives. I think six, almost six years of archives, probably maybe almost seven years. I think six and a half years of archives at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you. Let's go. Let's stay in California and talk to Ann. Good morning, Ann. Welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning, pharmacist Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's going on? Um, I've struggled with depression my entire life, have tons of therapy. Um, I've just kept myself going, but seven years ago, I had several things close together that just turned my life upside down. I have been having worse and worse severe depression. I started mm. drinking seven years ago, oh and my. I have high blood pressure now. It's all and connected. I have give, I've given up on medicine, and I try to take supplements, but... I okay. Just need help. I'm going to help you. I'm going to totally help you. All right. So first of all, when it comes to depression and mental health issues, you you can't just approach it for the most part. I mean, if you were frankly deficient or blatantly deficient in one nutrient like niacin or or maybe vitamin B1 or essential fats, and then you replace them, 
you might get some benefits for your depression. But it sounds to me like you got more going on than just a, a blatant nutritional deficiency, although that may be contributing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach this from two different ways, not just for you, but for other folks out there who are dealing with um, depression, with, with issues around mental, not just depression, but mental health issues. And remember... Uh, blood elevated blood pressure is a sign of a jacked up stress response system depression is also a sign of a jacked up stress response system so your body is under duress it's interpreting the environment as being threatening depression while it may seem like it's kind of a down regulated sort of system where you just don't feel like doing anything it's actually caused by a hyperactivity now, that hyperactivity is, ma is the manifestation of elevated stress hormones, so you're going to need to be approaching it from, this, from that angle. And, and let me give you a couple ideas here, okay? And this is going to be very interesting for you. And you may, I, Thank you. I, you may not agree, but I hope you listen open-mindedly. Totally. Underneath, underneath depression, this is the main reason why an, uh, antidepressant therapy does not work. And you said you've been in therapy, obviously. It hasn't, done, it hasn't worked for you. So here's the reason, main reason why it doesn't work, because depression is not the real problem. You see, underneath depression is another emotion, and it's the emotion of anger. Are you with me? Depression, I'm with you 100%. Okay, you're right. Okay, okay, got it. I'm telling you. But this, it goes even deeper, okay? It's for anybody out there who's dealing with depression and can't handle it. Depression is anger that is turned inward because it's just kind of given up. It's like there's nothing else I could do. So the depression, uh, the anger turns inward, it becomes depression. So you have to, first of all, you have to recognize the anger that's underneath the depression. All right? You have to, and you have to justify the anger because there's a reason why you're angry. You can't just say, you can't just throw it away. You have to deal with the reason why you're angry. And a lot of times you're going to find it comes from way, way back. Or it starts way, way back. Like childhood or even, even like infancy. Or even in the womb, for that matter. So you've got to deal with the anger that's underneath the depression. But here's where it gets really tricky and interesting. Because anger itself is symptomatic of another emotion. You ready? Are you listening? Yeah. Okay. Anger is symptomatic of fear the way depression is symptomatic of anger. We get angry when we're scared. Underneath the anger is fear. Anger is a way that fear shows up. Are you with me? Yes. Okay, so what you have to do, and this is for anybody dealing with depression who's been uh, going to a therapist and nothing's helping and you just don't like the yucky feeling of the depression. I'll talk about nutrition here in a minute. So I'm not, not going to ignore that. Uh, but you have to be able to address, first of all, the anger that's underneath the depression and see what that's about. And then the fear that's underneath the anger. Underneath the anger, you'll always find fear because fear is one of the two primal emotions. Fear and love are the two primal emotions, and they're manifested as the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, which if you've listened to this program, you know I talk about every day, multiple times a day usually. The rest and digest nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, opposes the stress and fight or flight nervous system. So learning to activate the parasympathetic nervous system is critical for you. It'll start by recognizing the anger that's underneath uh, the, the depression, then working with the fear. There's usually very good reasons why we're scared, but the problem is, is they're no longer good reasons. They were good reasons when we were infants and we were babies and we were children and we couldn't handle our environment. But usually the fear that's underneath the anger that's underneath the depression comes from a place where th that's not a, th that's a, a, a time gone by. You're no longer a child, but you're still responding that way because you never thought about it. You never thought about addressing these issues. So did you have any, did you, maybe you know, you might not even know, but did, was that an issue for you as growing up? Was there a fear issue? Grow, some, did fear play a role in your life significantly growing up? Or, it was an insane asylum, and I have tried to deal with the fear, but obviously I haven't. I mean, uh, I've there had you like go. third year therapy. We, when you say insane asylum, you mean you're being metaphorical, of course, right? You didn't, it wasn't literally well, insane. Well, my mother was a severe alcoholic. And but there you go. You don't know, say no more. Sweetheart, okay. say no more. You had to have been raised in a, in a place where you were, you were out of control, where, where you didn't have control. You didn't know when she was going to explode. You didn't know when she was going to be drunk. She wasn't there for you. So you were left to fend for yourself. Children of alcoholics are left to fend for themselves. You follow me? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, so the, the, pro, the reason I'm bringing this up to you is because as long as you try to handle the depression without handling the fear, it's not going to work. If you're, if you're going to a therapist who doesn't understand what I just told you, find another therapist. Because it helps to have a therapist, but they have to know what they're doing. To just handle the depression without working with the anger, and by the way, of course you're going to be pissed off having a childhood like that. Of course you're going to have anger issues. Well, of course you are, logically. You were betrayed. You didn't get taken care of. 
right? So, but underneath that is the fear and that's what needs to be addressed. Now, I didn't mean to go off too much on the psychological dimension of these things, but truly, if we're going to be interested in, in, in handling mental health issues, we have to go We have to address the psychological component. It's critical. And I don't mean to be, you know, sticking my nose where it doesn't belong, but I just thought you might want to hear that. You're you're fine. And, And I've been aware of these things and worked on them. I just have failed to get past it. Focus on the fear because it's coming from a place that doesn't exist anymore. Fear, F-E-A-R, is always about the past or the future. It's worry when it's the future. It's fear when it's the past. So fear comes from, that's why I say false evidence appearing real. You probably heard that, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. It's coming from the past. In the moment, right now, there's nothing to be afraid of, right? It's coming from the past. There's a little girl who's still alive psychologically in your brain. She's still there. She's still scared, understandably so. She needs love, which is the opposite of fear. Being depressed is a time to give yourself great love, you know, I did this thing once when I was, uh, I, I found that sometimes I would get angry when I was driving, you know, I had a little road rage issue, and I found that if I pictured myself winning the lottery as soon as uh, somebody cut me off, I didn't get, I didn't feel angry anymore, and I realized that underneath the anger is a sense that life is not, uh, the fear that, that we're talking about is a sense that life is not okay. You got to have the attitude that life is okay, and it has to, you have to override the primitive part of your brain, the, the subconscious part of your brain, I should say, with the conscious part of your brain with messaging that it's okay. And something as simple as deep breathing can do it. Something as simple as holding your head up can do it. I think understanding the, uh, the illusory nature of fear is the most important, but there's ways that you can do it. Exercise can do it, and certainly nutritional supplementation can help as well. And let me give you some ideas. You've got to keep your blood sugar very stable. Low blood sugar will exacerbate the problem. So you got to keep your blood sugar as stable as possible. Use building proteins and building amino acids, things like the branch chain amino acids. That will give your body a sense, a nutritional sense that everything is okay in the world. Make sure you're getting enough sunshine. Make sure you're doing a full uh, all-around nutritional supplement program like the Healthy Start Pack, but especially the B vitamins, especially electrolytes, and especially your ultimate EFAs, essential fatty acids. These are all building and life management substances as we've been talking about. The less uh, high calorie food you eat, the better off you'll be. Try to eat nutritionally dense. High calories will cause you to go into low blood sugar and that will exacerbate the fear response and that will lead to the, uh, which will ultimately make the depression worse. I'd be using, if I were you, the B vitamins all day long as in sipping on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine all day long. Uh, there's so many more things you could do. Lymphatic drainage, if you can hang upside down on an on a, a inversion device, or even just moving your body will help stimulate the blood and stimulate the lymph and also tell your body that it's time to build and time to grow and time to repair rather than time to hibernate, which is what depression will tell you, which is what depression is about. But I'm out of time, man. I hope I helped you out, uh, and I hope I helped uh, other folks out because I know it's, it's, you're not alone in this. Thanks for your call. I really God bless appreciate you. it. Thank you right. so much. Take Bye-bye. care, man. Have a, have a great day. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out my skin health website at truthtreatments.com or Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and all our longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.